millions of bacteria on our planet. Each one is given a specific name to help identify it. Now, as scientists, how are we able to identify one bacteria from another? The answer is simple. By using a dichotomous key and subjecting our bacterium of choice to multiple tests. Okay, this may not be so simple. Dichotomous key, what is it? Don't worry, I have the answer for you guys. But we'll, we'll get to that later. Right now, I'm going to go over the main points of which I'll be covering today. First one is, what's a dichotomous key? Why do we need it? Second point is, Why did we choose the test that we chose? And the third. From the test that we chose, how are we able to interpret the results into identify, helping to identify the bacteria? So, I'm going to give you guys a little disclaimer here. The bacterium that we're using, it's unknown to you what it is, as well as me. But, it could be any of the four listed on the board behind me. Now from these four, each one has a list of characteristics that when subjected to a series of tests are expressed. So if we look at these characteristics, we're able to form kind of a flow chart kind of thing that will kind of separate the bacteria into groups. At the end, this is called a dichotomous key. So at the top of our lit, our flow chart, or dichotomous key, we have the unknown. And so it gets subjected to its first test, its first fork in the road, and from here it's going to decide which way it's going to turn. Now ideally what you want to do is have, in our case we have four bacteria of interest, so what we ideally want is two on each side. So first fork, now we have two, next test, split them into one. So, that's not the case here though. We have three that split off from the first test and one. So, the first test I did was to look at the shape of the bacteria under a microscope. It could either be a bacillus, where it go down the three path, or it could be a caucus shape, more of a sphere than a rod. Now, if it goes out the caucus way, we know right away what the bacteria is. But if only for it was that simple. Unfortunately, when I looked under the microscope, we had a bacillus shaped. So, cross that one off the list, get rid of that one side, now we're on the three. So, we do the second test, which is a sucrose fermentation. Is our bacteria able to produce an acid, or base, in a sucrose fermentation test? So, what is a sucrose fermentation test? What it is, is pretty much a phenyl red tube filled with sucrose. And what you want to do, is take a swab from your petri plate of your un petri dish of your unknown bacteria and kind of just dip it right into the sucrose and stir it around for a bit, let it get agitated, hopefully some of the bacteria break off into that little solution and then you go and incubate it for at least a day. And if there's possible outcomes are acid forming, an acid for forming, so in that case the red tube now turns yellow, or a base forming, the tube turns pink. Not much of a significant difference, but it can happen sometimes. Or the tube stays neutral and just remains red, which, which if we look at our characteristics, one of them has an acid producing. So if things are simple, fingers crossed, an acid will form, and we can get rid of the other two, and we have our unknown. 
unfortunately, when the test was, when I did this test, looked at the results, we had red. So therefore, cross that one off the list, and we're down to two. Now, it's time to identify these two that we have now. We are stuck with E. coli on one side, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa on the other. So it's time for our third test. Time to figure out what our bacteria is. So the last test we do is subjecting our bacteria to a citrate test, which is in an auger slant tube this time. So what you want to do is take another loop full, just be sure in between every test to clean your loop by subjecting it to a hot flame from a Bunsen burner. So after you do that, take your swoop from your uh, petri dish and slide it on down that auger slant, which is a blue in color almost. And so if the test is positive, we should see like a green formation of forming on the top of that auger. But if it's negative, it will remain just blue and you won't really see anything. So, when I did the test, blah, 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 it remained blue. Now, if we look at our bacteria characteristics, we see that the one that's negative for citrate test is in fact E. coli. So now, through the dichotomous key and through those series of tests, we have successfully identified what our bacteria is. But, let's just go over one more time what I have covered today. The dichotomous key is a tool used by scientists to kind of lay out of possible outcomes of what the bacteria could be if you're given a list of all the possible bacteria. And from these possible outcomes, there are tests in between to help further differentiate them. So, all these together, the tests, the results, and the dichotomous key, they all help to identify what, a bac what the bacteria of interest is.